Right, Shalom. First, I'd like to give all praise unto Yahweh Shem Yahushai, and double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and honors to you, brothers out there in the highways and the byways, teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth. I just want to make the point, man, that um, the Lord redeemed the Israelites out of Egypt to be a people for Himself, man. Point blank, period. Okay. Now, were there heathens that left Egypt with the Israelites? Yeah. But they didn't have an inheritance with the Israelites and the Mosai weren't dealing with them. They were servants among our people. Because we're a royal people. We can have servants. Just like in the kingdom of heaven, there's going to be heathens. They're going to be our servants. That doesn't mean they were delivered. The deliverance of, of Israel is from the hands of our enemies. Alright? We were delivered from the hand of our enemy, the Egyptians. So that we may serve the Lord with one consent. That we could serve the Lord without fear. And that's going to happen again. Alright. Nowhere in the scriptures does the scripture ever describe any other nation of people being saved from Egypt. But Israel. So I don't know what the. You know. Anyway. Let's get this. Uh, second, second Samuel 7 and 23. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people. Even like Israel. Whom the Most High went to redeem for a people to himself. So the Most High, the whole purpose of the event in Egypt was to redeem his, his children. Those who had he, had he had already promised Abraham. Alright, what does they have to do? Yeah, a mixed multitude came out of Egypt. But the heathens that came out of Egypt with Israel, they weren't, the Lord didn't save them. They just, they saw what was good and they left with, with Israel, man. They wanted to go where the power was. But they didn't take part in none of the covenants. They didn't take part in any inheritance of Israel. They were servants among our people, man. Second class citizens, as they should be and will be. What the hell are you guys talking about, man? And to make him a name and to do for you great things and terrible for thy land before thy people, which thou redeemest to thee from Egypt, from the nations and their gods. For thou hast confirmed to thyself thy people Israel to be a people unto thee forever. And thou, Lord, art become their God. And the same thing is going to happen all over again. The Lord, through the gospel, through his son, Yahweh Shai, is going to redeem his people so that they may serve him. The redemption and deliverance is for Israel. When the when them nuclear missiles pelt America, there ain't going to be no heathens on no chariots. Now, are there heathens that's going to survive the day of the Lord scattered throughout the earth? Yes. But what are they going to survive for? For slavery. What do you think this is? There ain't no heathens being beamed up in no chariots, man. That's a holy, that's a holy function right there. The, the marriage of the Lamb. There ain't no heathens going to come nigh unto the Lord like that. What's wrong with you? This is uh, numbers. Man, this is numbers. Uh, uh, um, we can get. Well, let me get Exodus 24, actually. Uh, because when the covenant was made, where were the heathen when the covenant was made? The, 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 the Lord never made a covenant with the heathen that was among Israel. He made a covenant with his sons. All right, Exodus 24. We could start from, from um, because this is the actual Old Testament here, verse 4. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel and he sent young men of the sons of Israel so where were the representatives from the mixed multitude that came up with Israel out of Egypt how come the, how come none of them had elders or young men representing them because the Lord wasn't dealing with them they were just there all right which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord and Moses took half the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar, and he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said, All that the Lord have said we will we do and be obedient. This is the Lord making a covenant with Israel. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people. The, now it wasn't sprinkled on the mixed multitude, it was sprinkled upon the Israelites, and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord have made with you concerning all these words all right now we jump down uh, 
actually no numbers let me get numbers 18 that's what I wanted numbers 18 you find out that the heathens that were among us man they can't come there they can't come nigh man onto the holy things this is numbers numbers um 18 and we're going to start from verse 4 and they shall be joined unto thee and keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation now who was the congregation the congregation was the Israelites for all the service of the tabernacle and a stranger shall not come nigh unto you now the word there it would have to be exactly zawah which 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 represents an actual foreigner a heathen now you got the word gar which the word gar just means a sojourner someone someone living in a particular place which is not they don't have inherited rights so that could be an Israelite or that could be a heathen it depends on on the situation for instance if a Gadite for instance a Levite was known as a sojourner in Israel because the Levites didn't have no inheritance in Israel so they were sojourners so being a Gar or a sojourner doesn't necessarily mean you're a heathen but when you see the word Zawar nine times out of ten that's speaking of what a foreigner a stranger a foreigner an enemy the scripture says that the foreigners are not supposed to come nigh a stranger shall not come nigh unto you sir and you shall keep the charge of the sanctuary so the, a stranger couldn't even come nigh unto the, the holy men this thing was about Israel I, I don't know I don't know if you read the scriptures the scriptures the whole of the Torah is all about the Lord dealing with a specific people the Israelites so why the hell are you concerned with these heathens man these heathens they have their place the Lord has already prophesied what's going to happen to them they're going to be in subjection to the children of Jacob as is our blessing no one ever said that all of the heathen are going to be destroyed that doesn't mean they're being delivered or saved. The salvation is in Israel because we're being saved from the curse of the law for rulership. The other nations are going into slavery. They're going to be punished. And then they're going to be underneath us in righteousness. What's the deal here? <laughs>